Hi, I'm Carl, and this uh, glass tube in front of me here is filled with xenon gas at a pressure of about 50 torr. And uh, we are passing through this gas a uh, high voltage electrical current, and it's causing this uh, brilliant uh, arc discharge to form in that gas. Um, this is an example of what some people call plasma art or plasma sculpture. Um, but uh, it's just uh, cool looking and for people who are into uh, physics related hobbies uh, it should be quite an accessible thing and, 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 and a fun thing to do. So I'm just going to explain briefly. I'll turn the Tesla coil off. I'm going to explain uh, briefly how I put this together and uh, um, I have some tips and tricks, I guess, uh, from my limited experience doing it. So first of all, this is a uh, an activity that involves uh, some limited glass blowing, and uh, you need to be able to obtain the right parts to uh, to to do this. First of all, you need uh, some large pieces of glass, and you need uh, torches in order to work that glass. Um, this is a small commercially made torch that costs about uh, 150 bucks or something like that. Uses compressed oxygen gas and propane. And uh, these other torches, these are inexpensive uh, torches that cost about $100 a piece. And they will run off of a uh, an oxygen concentrator, a medical oxygen concentrator, because they don't consume very much gas. Um, the glass here is borosilicate. Uh, I really uh, don't think anybody should try to do this with anything else. Borosilicate glass is easy to work with and does not require extensive uh, annealing uh, or difficult annealing practices. Um, so I would recommend that's where you start even though it is a more expensive glass than some of the, uh, the soda glass that's out there. Um, this is a two and a half inch diameter tube and for the torches that I have on the table, that is just about the very biggest you can do uh, within reason. I'm sure there are some people who can skillfully manage a larger piece of glass, but this takes a long time to melt and to neck down like this, and uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to do something any bigger than that. You can also buy commercial uh, uh, Florence flasks or round bottom flasks and, and use those as starting points for plasma uh, art. Um, there you don't have to worry about actually uh, dealing with these uh, necking down features on, on large pieces of glass. So over on, the, uh, over on this side we have a typical uh, neon electrode if the camera would please focus. It's uh, there we go. This is a uh, this is a borosilicate glass uh, commercial neon electrode. These cost about $10 a piece. I have done nothing to the electrode other than to blow out a ring in the middle of it. And then the seal here is known as a ring seal. So we puff up the glass a little bit and uh, put this in here all under constant rotation and, uh, and just fuse that electrode in there. And then this type of seal uh, you want to anneal very carefully because it's prone to uh, to cooling down uh, faster in some places and cracking. At the other end I have put on a, uh, a tubulation that's flared out here to, to meet the thicker glass and then comes down and was originally mated to a quarter inch heavy wall uh, piece of tubing. You want to use heavy wall for the tip off because uh, otherwise you're prone to create a uh, a leak when you do this tipping off process. And for the tipping off, you're not going to have the benefit of rotation, so you have to use a torch to uh, to go around this joint and soften it uh, evenly on all sides so that it crushes in. And what I will typically do on, on this uh, is to use a large bushy flame that comes from this kind of torch, heat that joint up uniformly all around it, and uh, until uh, you start to see some uh, sodium flare on the glass. And then I'm going to take this much finer torch and uh, actually affect the tipping off. And uh, when you tip off, you'll frequently have a blob or lens of glass that forms on the, uh, the workpiece. That's a dangerous thing because it's 
a large accumulation of glass, it cools unevenly and it can crack. So you want to take a piece of glass cane and gather up that lens to the extent practical so that your, uh, your tubulation end is, is sort of uniform in thickness. And of course you want to double check to make sure there's no hairline that uh, runs out of that that will allow uh, gas to get into the, uh, the uh, system after you've uh, tried to seal it. The other thing you need for this kind of art uh, or sculpture or playing around, fooling around, whatever, is a vacuum system. This is my vacuum system. Actually, some of it's down there. At a bare minimum, you need a roughing pump, a, a mechanical vacuum pump that's capable of getting into the Militor uh, range. And uh, what I prefer to use is a uh, turbo, turbo molecular pump that's backed up by the roughing pump. The turbo pump mostly for this kind of application is useful to give you more speed. Uh, it's good to have the pumping speed so that when you're outgassing your tube or tipping off, you, you can get rid of uh, gases that are formed in the process. Also, uh, it helps you pump down faster. But the, as I said, the pressure in the tube here is 50 torr. That's pretty high. You don't need a high vacuum. You just want a clean, fast system. And uh, you can get away with just a mechanical pump. Uh, you can also use uh, other high vacuum pumps like drag pumps or diffusion pumps. But uh, these turbos show up on eBay frequently enough and they're pretty cheap. Uh, I think I paid, you know, about $100 for that and uh, got some kind of controller that I had to put in a box for it. But uh, um, this is the system. So we have a manifold. There are valves to control uh, gas flow up into the uh, manifold. We have a pressure gauge. This is just a regular, what they call a Borden gauge. God damn it, camera. There we go. Uh, you can see that the, holy shit. You can see the current pressure is uh, uh, 26 uh, inches mercury of vacuum. So this system's currently uh, valved off and it's under vacuum. And uh, that is pretty much a complete, that's pretty much a full vacuum here in the, uh, in New Mexico relative to atmospheric pressure. So um, this is an important feature. You want to use a direct or a, uh, a gauge that uh, doesn't depend on the, the gas species that you're measuring. So thermocouple gauges are not good for this application. Capacitive manometers work very nicely, but just a good old Borden gauge is, is good enough. Um, the manifold, I like to use these VCR fittings. They're expensive uh, initially, but eBay is your friend. These come very cheap on eBay, and uh, they use uh, little gaskets that, if you go to your Swage Lock store and buy these things, you'll pay uh, one to two dollars each for them, which is just an outrage. So again, uh, eBay is your friend, uh, where you can buy a sack of 50 of them for 10 bucks or something. Uh, the other thing you need to do this kind of a hobby is gas. And people are going to balk at the price of this gas because it's pretty crazy. Uh, this is xenon gas. This cylinder has about, uh, you can see the cylinder pressure is about 500 pounds per square inch PSI. This bottle is about uh, uh, 430 milliliters, the internal volume of the bottle. So the amount of gas in here is now about uh, on the order of 23 standard liters if you were to uh, consider that gas at, at uh, STP conditions. Xenon costs right now uh, about $10 per liter. And so if I had bought this bottle, I would pay about $230 for the gas plus about $200 for the bottle, the cylinder lecture bottle. So that would be, you know, $400 and then they would probably charge you a hazmat fee to deliver it and all this kind of stuff. So you're talking for something like this to buy it off the shelf like $500. And uh, that's kind of the minimum you can get by with. Uh, so Xenon's expensive. Luckily I got this second hand. It's actually Xenon that was made in uh, 1962. And it's still good. It's still, of course, nothing happens to Xenon. Um, the regulator, uh, don't have much to say about that. This is a two-stager. Whatever you do, you want to get something with a low internal volume, and either one or two stages is fine. 
And uh, then, uh, well, here's another cylinder of gas I just happen to have around. This being Krypton. Uh, it's less expensive than Xenon. This happens to have about 20 liters, 20 standard liters in it. Um, anyway, so much for gases. Neon you'll find is a lot cheaper. You can buy 250 liters of neon for about $180 in uh, a UHP grade. Um, they're going to charge you again. They're going to charge you for that cylinder. If you buy the cylinder, you're looking to spend $200 to $400, depending on what you buy. And uh, you're going to be charged a hazmat fee for delivery to your gas distributor and all that other stuff. So. Again, the gas is kind of expensive. But I will also point out that argon works well in this application. And uh, although it may not be as pretty as some of the other gases, it happens to be dirt cheap. Uh, so that's a good place to start. Um, let's take a look here again at the uh, uh, Tesla coil. This is a little uh, transformer that uh, I have immersed in mineral oil. And it's driven by a little uh, PWM circuit uh, and generates a high voltage. You can see that spark. Any power supply that's good for uh, these plasma tubes is going to be pretty safe, but you're going you're gonna to get enough RF there that you can uh, blow a hole in your flesh uh, if you leave it there for any length of time. So we'll have one, take a look again uh, with the lights out. Get up nice and close and see if we can see some of the features of this plasma. Unfortunately the camera does a crappy job of picking up on the color. That's a real bummer because this is a, uh, you get some beautiful green and xenon. Some really gorgeous color effects. And here we have some interesting uh, tendril action. Xenon's a poor conductor of heat, and uh, when it forms these arcs, um, the, uh, the heat or the uh, convective behavior of that gas tends to dominate what the arc is doing. So you'll find that the arc will, will sort of flow upward with that hot gas and uh, uh, give you some, uh, some effect uh, due to that convection. Let me turn the power supply all the way down to its minimum value. That's about right like that. You can see this sort of diffuse greenish glow out here. And then I can turn the power supply all the way up. So we get a raging crackle effect. You notice here the arc is rolling around. That's, that's convection of that xenon gas in there. You get these spiral effects. If we come way down here towards the end, I hope we can see some of that greenish color. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Camera doesn't pick up too well on that. As you see, the main arc is sort of a white color, and the uh, the uh, side tendrils pick up sort of a greenish. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. It's a bit of a long discourse here, but. Uh, I figure uh, some other people may find uh, plasma art to be uh, a fun pursuit, and uh, if you're already doing it and have tips for me, please let me know, and uh, I will uh, happily, happily consider your tips. One more thing. What is this white stuff here? This is, uh, this is devitrification of the glass. And we don't have it at this end because I broke off. The end of this tube was just filthy. This is a scrap piece of glass. And I just broke off that end. You can see parts of it on the floor. But uh, that's why I didn't get any here. But down at this end, I didn't feel like breaking off any more of the tube. But you'll get this effect if your glass is dirty and old. And uh, you'll also get it if your uh, torch is not being used right. But I think the most important thing is... If you see this, uh, you may have some very old and dirty glass, and uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, it won't be too bad, but that's often what causes that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, um, look forward to showing you uh, more plasmas later on.